research in rhetoric concentration. I'm Clara, I'm from Alexandria, Egypt, and um, I'm currently in the econ major and I still didn't decide on a concentration. And what was your high school like? My high school, I was in, uh, in an American high school in Alexandria, so, and it was a very small community, we had a very small student body, and uh, it was uh, completely American, so we had uh, AP uh, classes and tests, we had SATs, it was the same system, there was no IB though, and um, it, was, uh, it wasn't as diverse as say here, because most students were Egyptian, but um, all my teachers were American, and that was the system. And, and like, did the um, student body or like the community in your school kind of encourage you to go abroad or join a community like ours? Yes, it's because the, the assistant head of school was uh, also my advisor, and um, he always encouraged students to try to apply to colleges abroad because um, our education allowed it. And so, uh, and he's the one who, who told me that I should apply to a liberal arts college as well. And I'm glad I took his advice. Um, I, I went to the German school in Cairo, uh, but then I had to move and I went to the American school of Doha, where the student body was actually really large and we had like 75 different nationalities. It was quite diverse. Um, and I think that that was the main reason why I wanted, like I knew I wanted to study in Europe in a, in a more or less international um, university. Like here it's not like completely Americanized or anything. We have like so many different nationalities as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that this whole like diversity in the student body is really like helps you have an open mind and, and develop like different perspectives on everything. So yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Um, do you find the decision to come and study in Europe, specifically Berlin, Germany, convenient for someone with a Middle Eastern background or from the Middle East? Well, it was very convenient for my parents because they didn't, they were, um, they preferred that I go to Europe than I go to the US just because of that it's farther. And um, they, uh, so for, for my parents, the idea of going to Berlin was uh, very much accepted than it is. <laughs> <laughs> or New York or somewhere else and um, I thought that that was better too because uh, just in case of homesickness or that sort of thing especially the first year of college it's better to be you know just four hours away than 10 hours or 12 hours away and uh, Berlin is such a great place and I'm very happy to have come here because it's it is as you say it's a very diverse place it's not like the rest of Germany too exactly, there are yeah. many many foreigners Many, uh, and I think it shows in the restaurants. We have restaurants from all over the world, you know, that sort of thing. A so cocktail of languages everywhere. A cocktail of languages. So it's a, it's a very nice place to be in. I can't imagine living anywhere else at the moment. Like Berlin is just the place to be at, especially with the whole like current events and cultural uh, innovations and political reforms and everything. Yeah. And how's your experience here been so far, whether it's at the college or whether it's in Berlin? So um, about the college, it's a great experience because I once once you're in, you feel right away at home. There isn't, you know, the there are new students and also it's not like school anymore. Everyone accepts everyone because everyone is already different. Everyone comes from a different background. Uh, they could uh, speak differently. They could have different accents. They could have just uh, uh, different perspectives, and they're all uh, uh, accepted. And people become friends so easily and um, they support each other, you know, there is no any form of, um, uh, you know, mean competition or, or detachment or anything yeah. of the sort and everyone helps everyone. It's a very close community and I think it's a very happy one. Yeah, I, I really like the Bard community. I mean, it sounds a bit cheesy and cliche, but it's, it is a small community and that's where you're comfortable. It's like the comfort zone. It's such a big city with like so many people and then you just here with like the people you know the ki and everyone cares about everyone in a way like you're always ready to jump in and help and yeah, yeah. and it's funny because it seems that so bard uh, like we all speak english right and bard and it's different from the rest of the city english you know? bubble and panko yes exactly <laughs> so so it's different from the outside world so it's nice to have both both situations yeah mm -hmm. and and like have you had a language barrier um by living in germany and not speaking german no, the thing is that 
there are many people in Berlin who do speak in English. So, so if you're lost in the street and then you ask one person, this person only speaks in German, the second person you ask will know English. So mm -hmm. it's, it's okay. It's, it's not like other states in Germany, I hear. Yeah, like the small towns and such, they wouldn't. Yes, really Berlin is very different. Yeah, it's and cultural. German is mandatory to learn. Uh, yes, I have to learn uh, German. I think it's until B. Un until B two level. Yeah, so A one, A two, B one, B two, and I think that's a good thing though because you're here in Germany. You might as well learn the language, acquire a new uh, skill, and so uh, I think it's um it's it's a nice opportunity for me. Yeah. Um, about the classes, have they been up to your expectations? Were they too different? Too exactly like you imagined they, they would be or yeah I really really like the classes mostly because we're the classes are very very small we could be in classes yeah. with just 10 people or you know, less, that's <laughs> or less yeah. exactly and it was something that my advisor told me this is why he told me apply to liberal arts college because you were in a school that already had that uh, cl these class sizes so uh, so this w you would be comfortable in this place and that's that's very nice because then you're not in a class where there are, you know, a lecture hall with a hundred people and the professor doesn't know your name and everything. You're just a number, basically. Yeah, yeah. no, in this case, the teacher knows you well, the, um, uh, the professors can give you personal advice because they they know you well and know... Um, no, he has an individual, basically. And yes, exactly. Yeah. So that's, that's a very good thing. It makes you have like more attention from the professor and you learn more in that way. And you definitely have more input, whether it's in the class structure or whether it's in the administrative structure of the college. Like whenever someone has any suggestions, any anything they would like to change or something, all voices are basically taken into account because obviously with such a small number, everything counts. That's true. And I like the seminar forms that we have. I like that we, we sit down and we just talk whenever we want to, and it's a discussion, it's a conversation. Yeah. It's not the professor talking and we are just sitting down yeah, in silence. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, it's much more open, and I like that. Has there been any um, particularly interesting class for you? I really like the core courses that we're taking. So we took, first one was uh, uh, Plato's Republic. Republic and its interlocutors. So we were studying uh, the Republic of Plato. And uh, now we're taking the second core course for this semester is Forms of Love. And we also study, uh, we studied Plato for a little while, but we're, we're on into the Middle Ages and mm -hmm. more, uh, you know, more recent history comparatively. We're moving chronologically. Yes, yeah. we're moving chronologically. So uh, I think them very, very interesting because I get to be introduced to works that I would have never read <laughs> otherwise. Yeah. So, and I think that these are the, so the basics for everything. Like, for example, we take literature that was the basis for what Shakespeare wrote in later years. You know, so it seems, it seems nice to know the foundation of, um, of lit literature and philosophy and um, Political you feel, thought, yeah, you're much more knowledgeable when you take such classes, and I, I like it. <laughs> yeah. um, have you attended any guest lectures or workshops taking place here on campus? I went to more than one, and um, the one that I liked the most is Norman Menina's mm -hmm. lecture. Yeah, that was that was very inspirational, and um, so I hear that he works. He's currently yeah. teaching a uh, literature class, uh, Exile and Estrangement. Um, I'm in that class, and it's an amazing experience. You're basically sitting with someone who's lived through the Holocaust as a Jewish Romanian, and someone who's uh, been oppressed under the communist regimes in Romania, and then exiled. And you're studying such literature with him, and it's it's like such a goosebump yeah. inducing experience. Yeah, the lecture the lecture that he did was was quite quite amazing because you're sitting down with a page of history yeah. <laughs> well, like exactly. how many times do you get to have such an opportunity so it was yeah. it was the best for me there was another lecture um she's also currently teaching here Cassandra Lebuc, and it was on uh german colonization before the first world war and during it and then on the german feminist movement for black people here in berlin um and that was very interesting because normally you wouldn't really be involved in such things or you wouldn't maybe not be so knowledgeable about them and then you have someone who's 
has been part of such a, such movements for such a long time, and then they teach you about the whole like resistance movements and social reform movements and everything, mm. and it's it's quite interesting too. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's really nice when we have these uh, lectures, yeah, uh, because I think they they cover a wide area of subjects, and uh, so for example, this week we have a lecture on. Econo eco economic theory, another yeah. on something completely different, or like a movie, story, or, yeah, or a movie screening. Yeah. So it uh, it is not focused on a particular theme. It's these wide area of um, subjects. And yeah, just interests. like basically all the classes here, they're covering such a wide range. Even if you're just a politics major, the politics classes have like so many different aspects, like ethics and politics, econ and politics, uh, social sociology and politics, and all of that. And it's quite interesting yeah yeah all right <laughs>